Good morning. We are in Matthew chapter 12 this morning. And as you read that chapter, you'll find that Jesus has not a lot of good things to say about the religious leaders, right? Uh, matter of fact, in this particular chapter, he calls them a proto vipers. He, he says, how, how can you speak good when you're just full of evil? And which is quite the opposite of what the culture probably would have thought of these religious leaders, right? Because they were very um, clean. They were very holy and godly on the outside. Um, they went through the right motions. They did the, the right things, but um, their hearts were not uh, right. And, and so Jesus uh, actually addresses this at the end of this chapter, and it's uh, um, through a, a uh, story of an unclean spirit. And let me read this, because what he does is he talks about this unclean spirit leaving and then coming back and bringing with it more um, spirits. And, uh, and, and then he equates it to this generation. This is what this generation is like, right? And so in verse 43, he says this, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. And then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this generation, this evil generation. And uh, it, what is Jesus talking about there? I, I think what Jesus is referring to is so this unclean spirit goes out of this house, um, got out of a person, the dwelling place, right? And what happens is that person, like, I don't want the evil, right? I don't want this evil around me, okay? I want to, but, but they sweep their house, they put it in order, they look really good, but ultimately they're empty because they haven't filled it with, um, in this particular case, the spirit of God, love and affection for God himself. There is no relationship. And so now the unclean spirit comes back and he sees a nice orderly clean um, house, but it's empty. And because it's empty, he even brings more with him. And, and now that person is worse off. And uh, so Jesus is talking about that in terms of this generation, how the, that generation, and specifically, I mean, taking this as because he's been railing on the Pharisees for um, quite some time, in the sense that outwardly they look good and they want to look good to men, but inwardly they um, are empty. They don't have an affection, a genuine affection for the things of, uh, of God. They don't even recognize um, God himself as Jesus came in the flesh. And so, as he's uh, equating this story to this evil generation. Um, it's a reminder to us that uh, it's not enough for us just to want to just do the good things and keep the evil out, right? Uh, we need to have an affection for the things of Christ. We need the Holy Spirit as he indwells us to live through us and, uh, um, and, I mean, this is what it means to be a Christian, right? Because if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling you and, and uh, using you and teaching you and convicting you and guiding you, then you, you don't possess the Spirit of God. And you're not um, a believer. Your house is empty. And uh, so I would uh, in, encourage you um, that... Well, let this let the Spirit of God work through you. Let the Spirit of God um, guide you. Uh, listen to His conviction. Listen to His uh, voice, uh, and draw near to God. Have an affection for the things of God. Um, don't just have an orderly house that's empty. Fill it. Let it be filled with the, the power of God through his spirit. Father, thank you for sending your spirit. Thank you so much for um, 
loving us enough to not leave us alone. And Father, I thank you for the indwelling power of the Spirit that um, ultimately, Father, occupies, dwells within us, um, and uses us powerfully as we are willing. So, Father, I pray that you would do that. I pray that we'd be willing to let you use us, and the Spirit of God would do his work. Father, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless.